Welcome back to the second spot on integrated multitrophic aquaculture and historical perspective. Today we will be talking about the beginnings of IMTA. So on our previous spot, uh, we talked about food systems and the importance of aquaculture in today's um, fish uh, production, which already represents 50% of total production. But let's go back and let's start by um, take a look at the history of the integrated uh, aquaculture. IMTA can be traced back to the origins of aquaculture probably 5,000 years ago. At least that's the, the documents uh, that we have and the records we have. And there is, in, in particular, there is a document uh, with the detailed description of the integration of fish with aquatic plants and vegetables. And this was in China. And I think it probably looked much like this picture where you can see goats here and there is also the production of chickens and ducks. There is also here some ponds where you can see fish and water spinach and in this area here you have a rice field. But let's zoom into this food production system. So when we zoom into this picture what we can see is basically an image very familiar and it looks like a model with inputs and, and outputs and we can begin by showing the sunlight energy here it's basically feeding the photosynthetic organisms such as these trees we have here in particular an example of a papaya tree and also the rice field as we as you mentioned before so these are all crops that uh, are basically food for humans and animals on the other hand humans and animals are producing compost and manure these are um, rich in nutrients that are feeding this food chain over here in this in this sample lake where we have fish and the water spinach growing. This compost or manure could further be utilized as a um, fertilizer if needed to, to the rice field over here. So this is in reality a nutrient recycling system which is basically the central concept of IMTA, even though no one called IMTA at this time anyway. Um, but let's take uh, another look at this picture and look from a food system approach. We can speculate that it might have been what we call a traditional or local food system. It was usually run by family, growing diverse food, and it was probably based on a short local supply chain and with a basic processing technology. Also, it uh, most probably was highly dependent on weather and, and seasons. But this was 5,000 years ago. Let's move forward to when pharaohs ruled in Egypt. So there is a evidence that fish was growing in a mix of agriculture, agricultural drainable ponds. These two pictures that we see here are from uh, an Egyptian tomb where it can be seen ducks. In both, both pictures actually we can see ducks. And this fish over here, so they're being grown in close proximity with the fish that we believe that today corresponds to, to tilapia. So we've been in China 5,000 years ago. We've moved forward to, to Egypt. Let's go even to a more western location closer to our time today. So welcome to France, uh, the France uh, in the Renaissance where Henri IV, the king, decided to have a self-sustainable castle in Chateau de Fontainebleau um, because this castle was located 65 kilometers away from France. Because of this he didn't want to, to take the risks of having his food looted during this trip from, from Paris to, to Fontainebleau. So he decided that he should um, build a carp pond where you where we would have fish being produced. So um, in in France in the Renaissance period, the gardens uh, in, are very very famous for the the mixture between vegetables and fruit, and now with Henri IV also the fish. This is an important vision for what I'm going to show you next. So what I wanted to show you is that food systems are highly dependent on the historical context. So they're influenced by culture, by politics, by the economy, and of course by the technology that we have at one time. Um, this is basically our second spot. Uh, we started 5,000 years ago, moved to Egypt, 
and finished just now with um, Henri IV and his, um, his vision of having a self-sustained Chateau de Fontainebleau. Um, I'm going to move for our third spot. I'm going to move straight to the 20th century and I hope that you can join us in this third spot. <laughs> 